Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code, one word, if you want to add us on the Roku site, is Dwyer Boxing News. Right? Same thing for iTunes. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, last week we made a video chess video really for betting on the NFC this week let's share some thoughts on the AFC understand it's my philosophy that one of the best offers being made to you the gambler in terms of betting by the casinos are NFL futures right now my view is a minority view many people say hey you can't take every future of course you can in my opinion if you pick the teams at the right times, right? Understand the odds fluctuate greatly depending on what's happened the last few weeks. So let's talk about why futures are so good, right? It's the hedging opportunity. The teams you pick aren't necessarily going to win the Super Bowl, but you're going to get huge leverage even on quality teams. Right, so that will give you hedging opportunities when they play in the playoffs. Now let's talk about it. Your goal is to get a position at great leverage and then hedge the play in the playoffs so that you own both sides of the play. For example, let's say you get 10 to 1 odds on Team A. Right, and you bet x amount in their first playoff game if you bet 2x on their opponent at even money and if that opponent wins the game right you've just netted x you understand that right let me go one step further you want to think it through so you get teams that are hosting home playoff games, right? Because that'll increase the chances that their opponents for that game go off at odds relatively close to even money, if not better, right? If not as a dog. Now understand, if the opponent wins, in other words, I've bet X on a futures market on Team A, Let's call Team B, let's call their opponent Team B. So I bet X on Team A on a futures market, and I'm getting 10 to 1 odds. Then I bet 2X on their playoff opponent in the first round of the playoffs, Team B, at even money. Right? If Team B beats Team A, then it's 2X minus X. I've made X profit. Now, let's say Team B actually loses the game. Well, understand, I started out at 10 to 1 leverage with Team A. So now I move on to the next game, right? And I can try to make my money back by betting the 2x loss in the first round on the opponent in the second round, right? I might even, if the game is particularly long, let's say Team A is in an impossible situation, on the road at New England or Denver, right? I might even bet up to 3x, 4x, 5x on the opponent, right? Knowing that even if that opponent loses the game, well, keep in mind, I still have a chance to get back my money, you know, 10 times what I bet on Team A just pursuant to the futures bet. Think it through. So, in the AFC, right now, we're not even betting on teams. We're betting on situations, right? What if I told you that there is a team that's already guaranteed themselves a home playoff game, right? They've already clinched their division, folks. They've guaranteed themselves a home playoff game. And what if I told you that right now, as of December 15th, right, 
at 10.54 a.m. Pacific time right now. This team that's clinched a division that's going to play at home. And keep in mind, home is an indoor arena. They can close the roof. A lot of teams can't handle indoors. Right? Going off at 20 to 1 are Andrew Luck and the Indianapolis Colts. Now keep in mind, I don't believe the Colts are going to win the AFC. I don't. Right? But my goal at a casino is not to be right. My goal at the casino is to make money. Right? Because of what happened this last weekend, folks, Indy has clinched their division. They have won the AFC South. You're not getting 10 to 1. You're getting 20 to 1 odds right now on Indy to win the Super Bowl. You don't believe me? Go to your local casino and ask them for the odds. 20 to 1 odds. This is what's called in my book the low hanging fruit. I believe you need to get some money on Indy right here. Keep in mind, too, if things break right, if something happens, I doubt it, but if something happens to New England or Denver and they collapse, it's possible that Indy could actually end up with a bye in the first round of the playoffs. So, right, at 20 to 1 odds, I think it's worth the gamble. Let's think it through further. Right? Who would Indy play in the first round of the playoffs, depending on how this shakes out? Right? Well, understand, if the season were to end today, and you always need to be aware of who would be in if the season ends at that moment. Right? The wild card teams in the AFC would be the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens, right? Let me just say, just for hardcore hedgers, you can get a futures position right now on the Pittsburgh Steelers who currently are the fifth seed, folks, in the AFC. The fifth seed, right? You can get a prop, and keep in mind, Big Ben has won Super Bowls. Right? Mike Tomlin and Big Ben together have been there and have done that. Keep in mind, too, while there's questions out there about the arm strength of, let's say, a Peyton Manning, there's no question about Big Ben's arm strength. None whatsoever. Right? Big Ben's the kind of guy who, even in windy conditions, whether it's at New England or in Denver, can throw the ball deep. Same thing for Joe Flacco. Baltimore is the sixth seed right now. Right? You're getting Pittsburgh at 28 to 1 odds on the futures. Right? You're getting Baltimore at 28 to 1 odds on the futures. Understand what that means. That means you could lock in Indy at 20 to 1. You could lock in Baltimore and Pittsburgh at 28 to 1. And if there's a first round matchup in the playoffs between Indy and one of these two teams, you're on both sides of the play with leverage. You're guaranteed a team in the final four of the AFC. Just food for thought. Let's go further, right? Understand the New England Patriots right now are the one seed in the AFC. If they win out, regardless of what any of these other teams do, if they win out, they have home field through the playoffs. You need to be aware of that because somehow, curiously, Vegas is still mispricing the Patriots. They're the team with the inside track. Who has more Super Bowl experience than Belichick and Brady? Who? But yet, as I make this video, curiously, the Denver Broncos are getting shorter odds at Las Vegas casinos 
than the New England Patriots. That's called a mispricing. Think about it too. Who do you think's a tougher team? The Cincinnati Bengals, who right now sit atop the AFC North, or the New York Jets, a team that was eliminated from the playoffs for some time now. Right? If you feel Cincinnati's a tougher team, then Denver getting shorter rods than New England's even more curious because Denver actually plays Cincinnati in Cincinnati next week. Folks, this is how overrated Peyton Manning is. Okay, he was overrated last year when they posted Super Bowl odds. Those were great. Put some dollars in my pocket. He's overrated now. Right? These odds are preposterous. Denver went to New England. Denver lost to New England this year. New England plays the Jets, a team on the outside with no chance of getting inside. Denver plays the Bengals. Keep in mind, there's nothing Denver can do at this point to stop New England from being the top seed in the AFC. And yet you're getting shorter odds with the Denver Broncos to win the Super Bowl than you're getting with the New England Patriots. Understand, the Patriots, if they win out, they don't have to go to Denver to win the AFC. Just food for thought. They don't. Right? Let's go further. Another reason why you want to think about putting a futures prop on Pittsburgh, and keep in mind you're getting long odds. Right? Long odds. This is just a play for down the road. Playoff seeding, etc. Another reason why you want to consider putting a futures prop at 28 to 1. We're not talking hypothetically. I'm giving you actual odds on the Steelers and at 28 to 1 on the Baltimore Ravens. Is that since he has a tough schedule, right? Since he does have to play Denver this coming weekend. Then, of course, week 17, since he has to play the Steelers in Pittsburgh. Now, I know Cincinnati sits on top of the division right now, but there is a chance that either Pittsburgh or Baltimore leapfrog Cincinnati. Keep in mind, Pittsburgh actually can play Cincinnati the last game of the season. Right? Pittsburgh can directly impact what the Bengals do. Right? Let me say, that's why Baltimore, to me, is a very intriguing play. Because Baltimore doesn't have to play Cincinnati. Baltimore doesn't have to play Pittsburgh. Right? Baltimore doesn't have to play Denver. Baltimore, and keep in mind, if the season ended today, they're in the playoffs. If Baltimore wins their last two games, folks, that means they're in the playoffs. Right? Baltimore controls their own destiny. Just understand, if you're a Ravens fan, Baltimore is playing, in effect, playoff games right now. They can't afford to lose. Baltimore's next game is on the road at Houston. Now, understand, Ryan Fitzpatrick just broke his leg in Houston. So you're not getting... They're starting quarterback. You're not even getting their backup quarterback. Ryan Mallett actually was the backup. He became the starter briefly. Then he got injured. So you're getting a third string quarterback in Houston. Let's read the tea leaves even deeper than that. You know, Arian Foster already has cleared the 1,000 yard plateau for rushing. And we know Arian Foster has missed games, plural, not singular, this year. Right? He's missed games. Right? So, think it through. Right? Houston, a veteran team, and Jadavian Clowney, of course, is undergoing or has undergone microfracture knee surgery. He's out. Right? Houston has no shot now 
They've been mathematically eliminated from winning the division. That's got to let some air out of the bubble. Let's just say Baltimore's catching Houston at the right time. Guess who Baltimore plays week 17? You saw how bad Johnny Manziel and Cleveland looked. Keep in mind, Cleveland, deep division, right? Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. Cleveland knows they're out of the running now. They've turned it over to a rookie. There's a possibility that Baltimore goes into that last game of the season needing a win for playoff seeding purposes. These are two winnable games, right, that the Ravens have left to play. Two very winnable games. Now contrast that with Cincinnati, who has to play Denver and then Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh, who has to play Kansas City, a team that still has their eye on making the playoffs, right? And then, of course, has to play Cincinnati. And you realize that Baltimore, quite frankly, a team already in the playoffs, if the season ends today, has the inside track. But think about it. Odds-wise, what does it matter if the casino is silly enough to give me 28-1 to 1 on both Baltimore and the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? Understand, too, the way these odds work. As it becomes apparent which teams are in the playoffs, the odds are going to cut dramatically, right? You know, 28 to 1 could easily become 14 to 1, right? If Denver stumbles next week on the road against Cincinnati, and if it looks like the Colts have you know, a real chance of leapfrogging Denver. You can imagine you're not going to get the 20-1 to 1 odds on Andrew Luck, one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. Right, let's talk about one more team. The Buffalo Bills. Right now, I mentioned the Bills because they're the team that just dismantled Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Right? Understand the Buffalo Bills have one of the best defenses in the National Football League. No question about it. Understand the Buffalo Bills play their next game. They're 8 and 6 right now. They play their next game on the road against the Oakland Raiders. Let's just say that's a winnable game. Raiders have only won two games all year. One was a nationally televised game against Kansas City. The other game was the Battle of the Bay Area against their big nemesis across the Bay, the San Francisco 49ers. When the game's not personal for the Oakland Raiders, they haven't shown up. Right? Let's say Buffalo wins next week. They're 9-6. and six, Right? The last week of the season, they play New England in New England. Well, I'll agree, that's a tall order, but depending on what happens, right? Keep in mind, Denver could lose next week against Cincinnati, right? Keep in mind, the Patriots have already beaten the Colts. They have the tiebreaker. Hell, the Patriots have already beaten the Broncos. They have the tiebreaker there, too. Depending on how this shakes out, right? Given that New England has had some key players with injuries in their careers in the past, Right, Daryl Rivas, big-time injury in the past. Rob Gronkowski, big-time injury in the past. That last game of the season, Bill Belichick and the Patriots might not have anything to play for. They might have already locked up the one seed. Right, they might rest some veterans, get some guys off the field so they're healthy for the postseason. Right? Well, just understand, again, this is just for futures bettors who understand that you're making bets that likely won't win. You're just looking for hedging opportunities in the unlikely event that teams make the playoffs, etc. Just understand that the Buffalo Bills right now are going off at 150 to 1 odds. Think about that. This is a team that just beat what was the one seed in the NFC. Now let's talk to the 
hardcore gamblers among us. To the hardcore gamblers, if the casino is offering you 150 to 1 odds, do you even care if Buffalo makes the playoffs? Can you use this 150 to 1 odd prop here to hedge that last regular season game? New England against Buffalo. Right? Couldn't you take the Patriots in Foxborough against the Buffalo Bills? Right? Keep in mind, at 150 to 1 odds, what are you risking? You throw down $2, you have a chance to win $300 plus the return of your $2. So you could throw down $2 here. Last game of the season, you could say, okay, I'll throw down five dollars on a money line on the Patriots to win back my two dollars right what's the worst that happens if Buffalo wins the last two games of the season and they somehow are in the playoffs wow you have a lot of leverage here to work with right think about it right if Buffalo was able to slow down Aaron Rodgers I know the offense has had some problems but if that defense is that good and you're getting these kind of odds at this cheap a price, what's the risk? Right? Why not step up to the plate and try to hit a home run here? And 150 to 1 odds, understand, you could hedge every game Buffalo has from this point forward. In other words, I pay a buck. I get 150 to 1 odds. So next week, Buffalo plays the Raiders, right? You can imagine, you're going to get at least even money on the Raiders. I decide, okay, you know what, let me bet two bucks on the Raiders. If Buffalo lays an egg, after all, it's the game after an emotional game against Green Bay, right? Okay, fine. Well, I've won two dollars on the Raiders. I've lost a dollar on the future. I've made a dollar in profit. Not bad. Let's say Buffalo beats the Raiders. So they go to 9-6, and six, heading into their game against New England, in New England. Okay, great. Well, I've bet $1 on the future, which is still that viable, right? As long as Buffalo's winning, it's viable. I've lost $2. I'm down $2 here, right? Why don't I just come in and bet $10 on the New England Patriots, right? What's the harm? If the Patriots win, and let's say I get less than even money, let's say that $10 bet pays $7, right? Or $6. Let's say it pays $6. Okay, great. So I win $6 minus the two I've lost on the preceding week's Oakland Raider game minus the one I lose on the futures bet. I still come out $3 ahead. Let's say the Patriots lose. Guess what? Now I have the Bills in the playoffs. Okay, I'm down. Ten and two. I'm down twelve bucks. But keep in mind I received a hundred and fifty to one odds on the front end. Let's just say that first playoff game. I could come in and bet twenty five bucks on their opponent. Can I? I can bet thirty bucks on their opponent. Understand, even if Buffalo wins that game. Pulls the upset. Well, I'm still viable on the 150 to 1 prop. I still have a possibility of winning $150 at the end of it, minus the money I've outlaid. So then in the next round, I can ratchet up the ante on the opponent side of the play. That's what leverage gives you. The casino right now is offering you 150 to 1 odds. 150 to 1 odds on a team that just beat the top seed in the NFC. Keep in mind, too, some of the teams Buffalo's competing with for that last playoff spot include teams like the Pittsburgh Steelers, who actually have to play teams like Cincinnati, right? Just think it through, right? Kansas City, right? 
Um, or a team like Cincinnati that has to play the Denver Broncos, then play the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right here, you know, you're looking at a Buffalo team, right, that, you know, would have to play Oakland and then play New England in New England during a week in which New England might not have to win. Worth a look. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Just understand if the season ended today, the two wild cards in the AFC would be Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Just understand, right now, Vegas is offering you 20 to 1 odds on a futures play on a team, the Indianapolis Colts, that's already clinched their division, that already is going to be at home for that first playoff game. Keep in mind, Indy was at home last year for their first playoff game. They made it to the second round of the playoffs, right? You're getting 20 to 1 odds. Food for thought. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.